and to discuss their future. I think we should congratulate ourselves for this. In fact, you are spurred by what is happening to children. And as parents, you are the primary stakeholders for children and their lives. There can't be any other group who would have as much interest in children as parents would have. Nobody can question your presence in taking up the issue of right to education of children. It is a claim, it is an entitlement that you can have not just as a citizen of India but as a parent. And I think that is the strength of this All India Parents Association. That you have the local standard to question. No other state, uh, stakeholder other than children would have the local standard to question what is happening for children and their right to education. So there is no need to, I think, even define your role. Your role is a parent. You are the voice of children. You want to see that the, your voice reaches the establishment. There are so many forces that come between the parent and the authority. And here we have stood strong to fight each one of those forces to see that the voice of children becomes the voice of the government. The voice of children becomes voice of establishment. So you are the voice. You are the credible voice. You are the legitimate voice. And I think your voice should matter. So in whatever we do, we will have to emphasize we are not just a tokenist organization. We are talking on behalf of ourselves. We are not taking anybody's behalf. We are talking for ourselves and our children on behalf of our families, on behalf of our future. So I think that is the strength of the All India Parents Association. And this gives strength to those who are sitting here. In fact, you are not only representing voices of children, you are voice, representing voices of all parents in the country today. Each one of you represents about 100 million parents in the country today. We know how agonizing it is for parents, how much parents are investing in their children emotionally, in terms of their dreams and aspirations, as well as financially. This is something that should not have happened. This is something that should have been taken care of by the state, by the law, by government. Why must parents spend all their resources, even borrow money from everywhere, mortgage their land, mortgage their houses, go hungry just because you have to pay for a child's education, which is a right. See, parents need not do that. You don't have to, in fact, I have seen many domestic workers who come to our houses to sweep, to wash vessels. Each year they borrow at least 30 to 40,000 children from the employees, from the employers to pay for the school fees of their children in private schools. What kind of humiliation and insult those parents are be going through asking for that money? You and me know it is not easy to even ask for money. It is a loss of dignity. You are asking for money not of the government. You are not asking for money not of the state. When you ask the state, it is a demand. It is your right. It is your entitlement. But when you have to borrow from a money lender, when you have to borrow from a creditor, when you have to borrow from an employer, you are actually seeking charity. What a loss of dignity that must be for all the parents that they are seeking charity every academic year for their children. Is that fair? Is that just? It's not just private schools, even at government schools. There are any number of fees. It's unconstitutional. Right to education access. You cannot charge any fee of any purpose. It is free. It is compulsory. And the compulsion is of the government. And why is it that the parents have to make demand after demand after demand for 
reminding the government that it is their obligation to protect children and their rights. I think this forum cannot be a silent forum. It has to become a huge voice. I'm sure each one of you is working very, very, very hard. You know, working for your own child also is working for all children. If you do one success story for your own child in claiming the right, you are actually laying the foundations for all children in the country. That is what Ashoka Garbar does. Case after case after case, he gives hope to poor parents and children that you can fight, that you can get what you want. And each case liberates hundreds and thousands of children. I think each one of our acts cannot be undermined. You are not just a speck in the ocean. Your fight for an individual justice is a huge strength to millions of children and millions of parents. Let me come to the COVID. You know, I know, I don't have to repeat. But what it seems to me a surprise is that people think that what went wrong with children happened only because of COVID. Even before COVID, there was inequality in education. Even before COVID, there was loss of learning. Even before COVID, there was injustice to children. Even before COVID, nothing was happening. In fact, in spite of the Right to Education Act, I am not saying nothing was happening, but what was happening is was not enough at all. And during COVID, this added to this was the issue of hunger, was the issue of loss of livelihood, was the issue of state inaction. In fact, state's complacency and indifference to children and their well-being. In the two years of COVID, there was not a single statement that came from the state about what is happening to children and their plight. Not a single statement about education needs of children. All the efforts were efforts of NGOs setting up village learning centers. The government, if it did anything, was a disastrous online education program. We know how bad, how unjust the online education was. Apart from that, the government did nothing. So in a way, if things don't work under normal circumstances, it is, how do we expect things to work in abnormal circumstances? Under ordinary circumstances, when things have to run as usual, you find that things have did not run. So where will the state work under extraordinary circumstances? But I think every disadvantage should have been taken as an advantage and the state should have shown that it cared for children instead of exacerbating increasing inequalities injustice. This is where parents have a huge role to play to see that justice comes back to children. I only have two or three things to say. One is I feel that the parents must reach out to other networks also. There are huge networks happening. I just shared it with uh, uh, Ashokji that there are other networks of CSCL, there is a person who is from the RTE forum, uh, then are, are other educational emergency networks, there are CSFI, there, there are students union, there are trade unions, there are mothers associations. Wherever we are in whatever area we are, I think we will have to sort of expand our networks with networks. And that is, I think, very important. Ashoti will, of course, advise us on the litigation that we can take up. He's taking up a lot of work and what one can do in our own areas as parents to find suits uh, against violation of children's right to education. Social media seems to be a very, very important device for networks. Some of you are using it very well. But if there is radicalism only on the media, it means nothing. It gives you a feeling that you are fighting the system. But social media 
are nasty with actions on the ground. Otherwise, radical activities or social media is only satisfying yourself, but it doesn't take us to the next step. And I'm glad that as parents, you're working on the ground. And please do share whatever you're doing on the ground in the social media. One important constitutional right that parents have is the school management committee. The members of the school management committee are the parents. There is a, under the right to education act, parents have a voice. There is no way in which one can say you cannot question. So we would have to utilize the school management committees, empower parents to participate in the schools and question whatever is happening. Finally, I think we would have to take a larger view of school. What is a school? That is what I think COVID has shown us. School is an instrument for education. At the same time, it is an instrument to prevent children from becoming child labor, from getting into child marriage, from uh, combating gender discrimination. School is a place where children have friends and peer group. School is a place where children have networks. And school is a place where there is a break the cycle of poverty. Children have new dreams, new aspirations, and new paths to take their future forward and perhaps that will impact on the nation and its future. Thank you.